Hello and welcome to Wavelengths. It's a show about video game news. My name is Brendan Bigley. Uh, I'll, I'll come up with a better tagline for that. I, I promise. Um, but this is one of those situations where I really just wanted to like sit down, hit record, and get something out the door. You know, I just wanted to like make something. <laughs> um, if you are on this channel and you're like, where have I where have I seen you before? Uh, the answer is Good Morning Video Games, which is a show that I did for about two months in 2021, would you believe it? Uh, every Monday to Friday, I would get up at like 6 or 7 a.m., would uh, record a whole show about video game news, edit it, and get it out the door before 9 a.m. And uh, would you believe it, making that show every morning and then needing to work a full 9 to 5 job after that, a uh, really, really quick way to burn out on something you enjoy doing. And to be clear, I really liked doing Good Morning Video Games. It was fun. Um, it just became like untenable, I think, because I was so exhausted all the time. And if I like wanted to go out or do something at night or like see people, it just like I couldn't I couldn't do it. Not that I was seeing a lot of people anyway. And it was 2021. There wasn't really a lot to do outside <laughs> at that point, especially I think it was like February and March of 2021. So uh options were limited let's say it's wild to think though that it's been about two years and honestly for the past two years i've really been thinking like i want to i want to keep doing a news show like a, a video game news show and um didn't really know what the like right format for that was because i i, I keep bouncing around between all these different ideas and, and i'm sorry i'm front loading this with stuff that's not video game news but whatever i haven't been here for a while so why not um I kept bouncing around different format ideas and different and different thoughts about what to do. There was some conversation I had with Steven about incorporating more new stuff into into the Aether. Um, and then I was starting to write on wavelengths.online and was getting really into writing for a little bit. Um, but honestly, between doing video stuff and writing and like figuring out if news fit into the aether vibe at all what i really landed on was like i think good morning video games was pretty close to what i wanted it to be i just needed to come up with a more consistent and like healthier way of doing it than what i was um so where i've netted out at least for wavelengths right now and honestly this is a little bit of like putting a cart before the horse situation for me because Usually my move is to like test over and over and over and over again before I release something. Um, I'm deciding to break like every rule that I have about making stuff because I I was trying to go to sleep the other night and I couldn't because I was so restless and wanted so badly to make this show uh, that I was like, I just need to sit down and do it. Like I, I just need to like, you know, put in enough work to make it look the way I want, which is, you know, I'm really happy with this. Like, this is cool. Like, I think it looks sick. Um, but also, I needed to figure out a way to make the show come out in a way that was timely, but also wasn't, like, me destroying myself mentally or, or, or like, physically to make it happen the way I was a Good Morning Video Game. So where I've netted out is... Uh, I'm essentially going to keep a running list of, of video game news stories that I find interesting. And when I hit like a critical mass of stuff is when I'll do an episode. Um, and it's going to come out like this, a video. Uh, and it will also be a podcast because I am much better and much faster at releasing podcast episodes than I am at editing videos. So the plan here uh, is if you are watching this on YouTube, you're going to get some you know, extra visual stuff, but I'm also really making this a podcast that just happens to be video, um, which I know is like not exactly the best practice. But again, I'm breaking a lot of my own rules here. So the part of that is also the release strategy or the even the recording strategy of being like, I'm only going to make episodes when there's enough news that's worth talking about um, means that it's going to come out kind of irregularly. I'm aiming for at least once a week maybe more than that, depending on like what happens. If there's like a really big breaking story or something, uh, then, you know, we could just do kind of an emergency episode on that. The idea being that if an episode hits your feed, either your YouTube subscriptions feed or your podcast 
uh, app of choice. The reason that has happened is because something interesting has happened in the world of video games that I wanted to talk about. All of that said, I'm happy to be back. Um, please let me know how you feel about this, uh, the vibe, the format, everything um, in, in any comment section you can find. If you're just listening to this in, in your podcast app of choice, you can just tweet at me at Brendan Bigley. I'm also on Mastodon BB at the Aether dot space. Uh, both of those links are in the description. But all that said, uh, you, you want to talk about video game news? I think I think now's the time to do that, right? The first thing I want to talk about is an update to Nintendo Switch Online, uh, which recently saw the release of the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance libraries, which obviously, you know, very limited. I think Game Boy wise, there's maybe like 10 to 12 games. And on the Game Boy Advance side, there's only six available. And before I get into anything else, that hasn't changed. There's still only six Game Boy Advance games, which I think is like so, so wild, especially considering that's like the premium tier. You'd think that there'd be more stuff coming out for that and the N64 library and things like that, but not so much. Um, but we did get two new Game Boy games, both of which I'm really excited about. Number one is Burger Time, which is um, a game I won't go super into, but it's great. It's like, you know, arcade score chase kind of game. Um, I loved Burger Time way back when. I was such a big fan of that game. Way back when on my gateway computer, my dad installed a bunch of emulators, which like, I didn't even know what emulation was or anything. I don't know how he found it. He and I have never talked about this also. Uh, but I just remember this one day he was like, yeah, I put a bunch of games on the computer. I was like, oh, okay, cool. And the one that I played the most was Burger Time. I don't know why. I think maybe just the name. Maybe Burger Time was so exciting to me. But uh, essentially, it's like uh, Donkey Kong adjacent. Like you, you are a little guy. But instead of Mario, you're like a chef and you're running around on a bunch of scaffolding and you have to jump on specific pieces of a burger to get them to fall down and create a burger. And you get points depending on like how well you're able to make a burger. It's great. It's great. And you should play it. The other one that I really want to talk about, because this one means so much to me, is Kirby's Dream Land 2, uh, which is was a i think straight to game boy game uh and and was like one of the most formative games for me i think you know thinking about my lineage of when i started playing games i i really started with the sega genesis because my dad had a sega genesis um so i was just playing a lot of like sonic the hedgehog i would go to funko land which was uh a now non-existent video game retailer and I would just like, you know, point at boxes that looked cool or like go into the bargain bin and like get stuff that was, you know, really deeply on sale, um, which is how I played a lot of like real terrible video <laughs> games growing up. Um, but eventually got a Game Boy for Pokemon. Uh, and alongside that, you know, there, there were a bunch of other games that were out that just like seemed fun and interesting. And I don't know how any of them really came into my life. I just remember every once in a while I'd get a game. I imagine it was like a birthday present or like a holidays thing. But one of those experiences was receiving Kirby Streamland 2, and I just remember eating that game up. It was my first experience with Kirby. I didn't know who Kirby was. I'd never seen Kirby before. I didn't even really know, like, this is a Nintendo game. It was just, like, you know, a, the cool game on my Game Boy. Um, and I really, like, to hell and back played that game nonstop. I remember playing it in the backs of cars. I remember taking my Game Boy to the beach, which was like such a terrible idea and playing that game like in the sand. <laughs> Kirby Dream Land 2 is an amazing game. And this is one of the things that I really want to bring up. Why I'm so excited about this. It so holds up. It like, I think actually is one of the best Kirby games. You get to ride on the back of a gerbil and a bird I mean, there's so much stuff going on there. Uh, you, you should check out Kirby Streamland too. If you have access to Nintendo Switch Online, I highly recommend doing it. Also, if you don't have access to Nintendo Switch Online, here's my big recommendation because I did this with a bunch of friends. I didn't know this was an option until a friend hit me up. You could just create a family account and have 10 people on there and then split the cost between 10 people and you're golden. Especially even if you're doing like the expansion pass or something. Uh, highly recommend doing that. It's a, it's, it's a good idea. While we're talking about things that are getting added to subscription services, I'm playing with, um, in case you're wondering, this is a, a Wi-Fi dongle that gets plugged into a retro handheld. Actually, let's pivot real quick, because the other thing I wanted to talk about uh, real quick is that Retroid, the makers of what is currently my favorite retro handheld device, the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, um, have just announced a clamshell version of the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, um, 
which is called the Retroid Pocket Flip, and it is just stunning looking. I mean, I'm getting a... I'm, I'm getting a lot of mixed feedback when I see how people are responding to this thing. And there's no pricing information or shipping information or anything like that. But if you're totally outside of the world of, of Retroid handhelds, um, essentially there is a industry of uh, manufacturers creating what look like small Game Boys or Game Boy Advances or whatever. Usually, Usually the two formats are like a horizontal one that looks like a Game Boy Advance or maybe closer to like a PlayStation Vita or a PSP or a vertical one that looks a lot like the original Game Boy DMG pocket color, things like that. Um, And there are variations here and there, but usually they're following those two basic formats. What I've been hankering for is a clamshell folding device. And, you know, two screens would be great, but even if it was just like a Game Boy SP kind of vibe, I'd be very happy with that. Um, there is one company called Pow Kitty that is making a thing. I think it's called the Pow Kitty V90, which which is a clamshell, but it's very cheap and doesn't play a whole lot of stuff. Um, so I've been waiting for another company to like finally make a higher end version of a clamshell device. And Retroid seems like they're doing it. I mean, you got a bunch of colors. You got black indigo, which is like the original Game Boy Advance indigo. Um, there's a sport red version. That's a limited edition. It's like glossy. Uh, they have like a transparent red one called watermelon. It looks really nice. No bottom screen. Uh, and people are upset about the analog sticks because they're kind of the like 3DS circle pad vibe. But having just played so much Nintendo 3DS, honestly, I'm totally fine with that. I don't think I'd I'd really be against it. The big thing for me, and and where where I'm starting to be like, eh, I don't I don't know if this is for me, even though I've been wanting something like this for so long, is like. I just got the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. And one of the things about all of these companies like Retroid and Ambernick and Pow Kitty is like they just they just don't stop releasing these things. It's like you can't go three months without these companies releasing something new. And Retroid was kind of the outlier there because it was like the Retroid Pocket 2 and then the 2 Plus, you know, like a year or two later. And then the Retroid Pocket 3, like two years after that. But then the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus came out like I think three months after the 3 which was why is a wild thing. Uh, and now here we are with the pocket flip, which is another one in their lineup. And it probably has the exact same internals as the three plus. If, if I were to guess, they haven't said that yet, but if I were to guess that would probably be the vibe. Um, so I'm not going to pick one up, but I kind of wish I kind of wish I wanted to maybe one day, you know, if they, if they, if they do like a, a second version of this, I'm, I'm very interested in the form factor. I love clamshell devices. Um, I would love to take this stuff on the go. I would love, love to have one of these, but uh, probably won't pick one up myself. Maybe, maybe I'll hit up Retroid. Retroid, if you're watching this, email me. Do you know my email address? Probably not. <laughs> I feel like I'm already going longer than I wanted to, so I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I'm, I'm gonna jump to the two last stories I really want to talk about. Number one is a thing that I'm not seeing get a lot of press pickup, but I personally am extremely excited about, which is a video that went out on IGN and it's a trailer for Remnant 2, which is a sequel to Remnant from the Ashes, which was one of my favorite games of, I want to say 2018, but it might've been 2019. I think it was 2018, uh, which was a Dark Souls inspired multiplayer game, co-op specifically, co-op multiplayer game inspired by Dark Souls that was billed really as like, what if Dark Souls had guns in it? Which like, you know, that's fine. That's fine. And I don't mean like Bloodborne guns. I mean like really like third person shooter kind of experience you know you're over the shoulder gears of war z god of war z you know x of war z kind of experiences um but also there was the melee component and the the bosses and the world design and the enemy design was very similar to what you'd experience in a dark souls game and that's not even like a tangential comparison that's like what they said in marketing when it came out was like what if dark souls uh had multiplayer and guns great honestly fun idea And executed so well. And one of the main things that was executed super well about Remnant from the Ashes is it was completely unpredictable. We have a bunch of video of Steven and I playing it on the Into the Aether YouTube channel. I totally recommend checking out because you start off in what just feels like the Last of Us world. And you're fighting zombies. And there's like a big tree boss at the end. And then when that's done and you move on to the next level, the next level is just like 
Mad Max. Like you immediately go to Mad Max world, but also it's Mad Max. And what if aliens had invaded the world of Mad Max? And then there's another one that's like a high fantasy world where you're there's like a war between fairies and centaurs and you're like caught in the middle of it. It's just every time you travel to a new place in Remnant from the Ashes, it is a completely unpredictable experience. And I am obsessed with it. I think it's an amazing video game, even though it falls into a lot of the pitfalls that I usually have about games inspired by Dark Souls. You have the bonfires, you have the fog walls before your bosses. Uh, There are some quality of life things that they do in terms of streamlining the experience, but also the addition of multiplayer and the seamlessness of multiplayer, just bringing your character into somebody else's game and replaying the same missions more than once, almost akin to like a Destiny or another live service game, so you can get different loot and hang out with your friends. Really brilliant, honestly. They eventually also added a roguelike mode that allowed you to just go into a generative... Like, when you when you beat the game, you could go into a generative... Eh, a generative version of Remnant from the Ashes that would allow you to play like a remixed version of the game and just like see how long you could make it. Brilliant stuff. I think that that game is spectacular. And there's a sequel and it's coming out this year and I don't think it's getting a lot of pickup because the first one didn't get a lot of pickup. People didn't, I mean, as far as I know, the first one wasn't like a huge success. I think it was a little bit of a cult classic in the same way that I'm describing it now. There are a bunch of other people who are like fervently into Remnant from the Ashes. Um, But Remnant 2 came about because the developer was like we wanted to make a bunch of dlc for the first one and you know the the dlc got a little bit bigger than we wanted um and it seems like it'd be better to build a new thing from the ground up which i'm always in favor of i think that's a great move uh so remnant 2 is coming and the trailer finally on ign that came out is specifically and i think this is so smart it's it's uh showcase of a new class that they're adding called the handler class and the handler class is like a normal person and they have a dog companion and the dog companion is like a support to you as the handler class so i from what i can tell the dog is doing like buffs and heals and things like that is also drawing aggro from enemies and bosses um and is also attacking as well and the whole idea behind the handler class is that if you are playing remnant 2 solo this is the class for you because technically you're not alone because you have this dog companion, which I love. I mean, first of all, the idea of creating a class for this game that's like mainly supposed to be played multiplayer that will allow you to make it through solo, really smart because obviously not everybody's going to be able to play the multiplayer. But on top of that, I think diegetically making the idea of, of you know, you are technically alone in this game, but your companion that is helping you out is a dog is very smart. It reminds me of like what Peter Molyneux originally said about Fable when they added the dog to Fable. But I think this is actually like really making good on that idea. Not that Fable didn't, but like, I just think this is a much more streamlined way of including a dog for gameplay reasons in a video game. I love it. I think it's, I think it's exhilarating. I'm so excited about it. Uh, Remnant 2 is coming at some point this summer. That was the big, that was the big update there, uh, that it's coming at some point. Um, that having been said, the last thing I want to bring up is that the Steam sale started today, Thursday, March 16th, that's when I'm recording this at least, started today. Uh, obviously there's a bunch of games on sale, but the big thing is that the Steam Deck itself is 10% off, which I think is the first time that that's happened. It's the first time they've done a discount on the actual Steam Deck, uh, I mean, the Steam Deck is amazing. If you've been thinking about getting a Steam Deck, I imagine there's no better time to get one than right now, uh, unless there's like a follow-up coming or something, which, you know, don't know about that. Maybe. Maybe there is one. Uh, I I assume they're going to make another Steam Deck. But for now, if you want the Steam Deck as it stands, which is an amazing device, and even if they release a second one in uh, a week or something, the first one will still be great, and probably the best deal you can get... uh, on a gaming handheld like that, ten percent off is a uh, is is worth taking advantage of. And that's it for this edition of Wavelengths. Uh, apologies if it's a little bit more frenetic than anyone wanted, <laughs> but again, I really just wanted to get it out the door and get back into the practice of making something uh, and and allow this to exist. Um, I have some bigger ideas about things that I want to do with this show. I want to bring guests on. I have, I have a bunch of ideas, um, but for now, I'm just trying to say, like, I'm going to commit to making this show in a way that is uh, healthy.
And that's the plan. You can find me at Brenda Bigley on Twitter, bb at the aether.space on Mastodon, and wavelengths.online. Please like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff, uh, share it with your friends, etc. Maybe not this one, honestly. I'm not even going to tell anybody that this is out. If you're seeing this, it's because you're already subscribed to this channel on YouTube. Uh, and if you're listening to this after the fact in your podcast app of choice, that means I probably am already talking about it. So uh, I guess share whatever tweet you saw with somebody else. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. <laughs>